Hi, in this video we're going to talk about the normal or Gaussian random variable, which is one of the most important random variables in practice. We're going to first talk about how to standardize random variables, then discuss the details of the normal random variable, the closure properties, and the standard normal CDF. So some intuition. Let's say that on your history test you got a 90% when the mean was 70 and the standard deviation was 10. And on your math test you got a 50% but the mean was 35 and the standard deviation was 5. So which test did you do better on in terms of standard deviations above the mean? Well, you scored higher in history, but how many standard deviations are above the mean? Well, it's 90 minus the mean 70 divided by the standard deviation 10, so that's two standard deviations. And similarly for math, you scored three standard deviations because that's just uh, 50 minus 35 divided by 5. So in terms of standard deviations above the mean, you actually did better in math. And what we did was we computed x minus the mean divided by the standard deviation sigma, which is a way to determine the number of standard deviations you were above the mean. So in general, if x is any random variable, discrete or continuous, with expectation mu and variance sigma squared, and a and b are constants, remember from linearity of expectation that e of ax plus b is just a times mean plus b, and the variance of ax plus b is just a squared times the variance of x. So we call x minus mu over sigma a standardized version of x because it measures how many standard deviations above the mean a point is. So, in particular, if you take the expectation of the standardized version, you get expectation of x minus mean divided by standard deviation is just by applying linearity of expectation, you will get zero. And if you take the variance, you'll get one by linearity of variance. You pull out the one over sigma squared. So in general, the normal distribution has two parameters, the mean, mu, and variance sigma squared. And it's defined by the following PDF. And it looks kind of big and ugly, but you just need to really know that this PDF produces a bell-shaped curve with expectation mu and variance sigma squared. So some examples of what this looks like. So this is a standard normal with mean mu, sorry, mean zero and standard deviation one. So if you increase the standard deviation, this makes it more likely for the variable to be far away from the mean. So this actually makes the distribution flatter. But if you don't change mu, that does not affect the center of the distribution. If you do change mu, the mean, then that shifts the distribution left or right. So if you changed mu to four, that just shifts the distribution four to the right, but the shape remains unchanged. But if you both shift it and uh, increase the standard deviation, you get something like this, which is the same as this one, but shifted four to the right. Okay, so there's some interesting closure properties. So again, recall these linearity of expectation and variance formulas, uh, but the key thing is that if x is normal with mean mu and variance sigma squared, then ax plus b is also normal. If you scale it by a linear function, it's also normal with the expected mean and variance. So, and in particular, if you transform x by subtracting the mean and dividing by the standard deviation, we get that this expression here is actually normal, zero, one. This is called the standard normal distribution. And the special thing is that the transform random variable remains normal. The mean and variance are no surprise because they can be derived by linearity, which holds for all random variables. Okay, and this also works if you have two independent random variables. So recall by linearity of expectation, we can derive formulas for expectation of ax plus b, by plus c and variance of that. But if x and y are independent normal random variables, then this combination of the two random variables is also normal. And again, it's special that the sum is normal. The mean and variance are no surprise. So the standard normal CDF is the CDF of the special standard normal, which is normal zero one. And we denote the CDF using a special symbol phi of a because it's so commonly used. It's just the probability that the standard normal z is less than or equal to little a. There's no closed form formula. We have to look it up in a table. So, and a note here that remember phi of a is just the area to the left of a. So because the normal distribution is symmetric, then the area to the left of a is the same as the area to the right of negative a. And that shows that phi of a is the same as one minus phi of negative a because phi of negative a is the area to the left of negative a and one minus that is the area to the right. And that's what I said. So uh, if you want to define what phi of 1.09 is, you would look at the row 1.0 and then go over to the right column to 0. 09, and you can find the value there, which is 0 0.8621. This only has positive numbers, so if you want to look up the phi for a negative number, you can look up phi of negative a and take one minus that. So in general, uh, if x is normal with a different mean mu and variance sigma squared, we can use the standard normal CDF to find its CDF of x. So the CDF of x is the probability that big x is less than or equal to some value little y, and if you standardize both sides, subtract the mean divide by the standard deviation, we get this. And notice that this expression here is a standardized normal, which is normal zero one. So that just it becomes probability that the standardized normal is less than or equal to y minus mu over sigma. And that's just phi of that. Okay, so that's how you compute the CDF of x. What about the probability that x is between a and b? Well, that's just, by a previous video, we showed that that's just a CDF at b minus the CDF at a. So that's just phi of this, phi of the standardized b minus phi of the standardized a. So this is just a summary of what we talked about. Thank you.